before uh, calculators and computers, they still had mechanical calculation machines, machines, and this is about one of them, this talk. It's about the comptometer, one of the most important calculating machines ever. And it's a bit of forgotten history that, I'm, that I quite like and I find interesting, and I hope you do too. This story starts with Dor Eugene Felt, and when he was in his workshop uh, in his mid-twenties, where he was working, he saw a, an automatic planing machine, and the mechanics mechanism of that uh, inspired him to try and use something similar to make a calculation machine. And his first prototype is this. It was made from a wooden macaroni box and wooden meat skewers and bits of metal and rubber bands, anything he needed. But it, it worked, and it showed it uh, could be made into a, a commercial machine. And after a few years of development, he made something that could be sold. And um, it's a fairly simple uh, mechanism. It has a, a long lever along the length uh, with a pivot at the back, uh, numeral wheels at the front. And if you push a button near the front, uh, the lever moves a little bit, moving the wheel one step. If you push the button at the back, uh, it's closer to the pivot, so it moves the lever more, and it moves the wheel nine steps. It's, it also has a carry mechanism and everything, but uh, that's the main thing. So he found a, a business partner, Robert Tarrant, and together they set up the Filt and Tarrant Manufacturing Company. They didn't have much in common, those two men, except a love for fishing, as you can see. Um, but um, so uh, Dor felt he started to try and sell this machine. It was difficult. It took him three years to sell the first hundred because it, it was very expensive, $125 at the time. That's about the equivalent of $4,000 today. And in a, over a period of uh, 15 years, he sold about uh, 6,000 of them. There's about 100 of those remaining. They're very expensive. And... Um, but in 1903, he uh, redesigned it and made a new model. This one had a metal case. And it has had lots of other improvements. But the most important one was that you could press several buttons at the same time, making it much quicker to use and easier to use. So let me just explain how it's, how it's used. It's, um, it's actually fairly simple. It's a direct adding machine. As I say, you could press several buttons at the same time. So if you enter this number, you just use four fingers and press all four buttons at the same time. And as soon as you let go, the number gets added to the register at the front. And you press another number, and that immediately gets added. You don't have to press any other buttons in between. Uh, subtraction is a bit more difficult because the wheels only go one way. If you want to subtract, it means you have to go all the way around the clock once to, to the right number. So you can't just subtract. What you do is you add the tens complement of that number. Well, this is a bit complicated, all these nines. And uh, even if you add the tens complement, you get this one all the way at the left. It's uh, overflow. Um, and to, to remedy that, they use this... Uh, these carry suppression buttons at the front. So it stopped a carry happening from one column to the next. So you didn't have to do all those preceding nines and uh, you didn't get that overflow one at the bottom, at the left. So that was, that's fairly easy. Multiplication is very easy. It's just uh, repeated addition, you know. Do, entering a number three times, you multiply it by three and you move a column to the left and now you add multiples of 10 to it. So now it's multiplied by 23 times. Um, so, division, on the other hand, this is where it gets interesting. It's, uh, it's, done, it's essentially long division. Uh, you sub division by 12 here, you subtract 12 from each column. But now you don't use those carry su suppression buttons at the front. So, each time you subtract, you get this overflow to the left. And that keeps track of how often you subtract this number. And that, gives, that builds up this quotient. This trail of overflows builds up this quotient. And the other two digits at the right show the remainder of the division. So it's a, it's a very practical, simple machine. And uh, yeah, this, this model and the next few models sold in better numbers, about 2,000 a year over their period of 12 years. Uh, but the real breakthrough came with the next model. And 
it wasn't really mechanically that much better. The real reason this one did well was because of the First World War, the Great War. And this meant that a lot of men in the back offices were now off to the front, and all these uh, open spaces were filled with uh, trained women with comptometers. And uh, yeah, as the, as the advert uh, said here, more work and fewer to do it. There's no dodging the issue. The call to arms is thinning office forces. And within a few years, the back offices looked like this. Rows and rows of women on these comptometers doing all the calculation work for the modern business office. And yeah, so the, this model uh, and the, the next few sold 8,000 a year over a period of, of 25 years. About 200,000 of these were sold. And lots of people needed to be able to use them, so they set up computers, or comptometer schools. Uh, they had 100 schools in the US. Uh, there were schools in all the major cities in, in Europe, like Paris and Copenhagen, as you can see here. They had six schools in Australia, six in India. They uh, trained 20,000 people a year in the US. It, this made the Felton Tarrant Manufacturing Company the largest private educational establishment in the world. And yeah, they even published this uh, magazine to show what uh, all these computer operators were up to in their spare time. It's, uh, it gives a, uh, yeah, all the office gossip and everything. It's, it's an amazing view into the society of the time. But uh, yeah, eventually things have to decline. And when Dorfeld died, died in 1930, he'd resisted going electric for years, and this electric model that came out didn't do so well. It wasn't as durable as the mechanical models. And the later mechanical models, they didn't do well because of the Second World War. Um, this time, the whole European market was essentially closed. And uh, in the reconstruction afterwards, the trade protectionism um, made it difficult. And yeah, European compet competitors made similar machines now, which were, to be honest, a bit better. And um, yeah, so it, it declined, and eventually in 1960, the company was sold and, uh, and bought out by Victor Adding Machines. And that was the end of the computometer as we know it. But yeah, the first electronic machine was still of a computometer type, as you can see, that kind of keyboard. But with the coming of computers, that was the end of this type of machine. So that's it. If you want to see any more about this, you can visit my website. Thank you very much.